In a Fox weather alert, we are heading back to Louisiana, where unfortunately there was a deadly pileup on Interstate 55. At least two people are dead and multiple people have been injured between Ruddock and Manshack, Louisiana. It's been the combination of fog as well as smoke from marsh wildfires from the south shore that is creating near zero, zero visibility for drivers. And as a result, the Louisiana Department of Transportation has shut down Interstate 55 in both directions. We're now learning, unfortunately, two people lost their lives, and we do expect the number of injuries for people, for drivers, to go up. No word on the exact number of injuries, but joining me right now uh, by phone is Lance Scott. He was driving uh, when all of this went down. Lance, great to hear from you uh, this morning here. Number one, how are you doing? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Luckily, uh, you know, we did not, we weren't part of the impact zone, so we were able to get stopped and, and we're safe. So can you tell me what happened? I mean, before you approached the impact zone here, what were conditions like on the ground? I mean, was it very foggy? Yeah. Uh, were, were you having some issues seeing in front of you? Yeah, it was, uh, I'm about a mile south of Manchac, Louisiana, and fog was, it was <laughs> like I was in Thule fog in the Central Valley of California. Uh, unlike anything I've, I've experienced here, I was on my way to the airport, take my daughter to the airport. I happened to look down to see what our timing was like, and I noticed on my GPS I had red on the road right in front of me. So I was going about 65 or 70. I immediately started braking hard, and about an eighth of a mile, uh, there, the traffic was stopped. I was able to lock them up, no impact, and the people behind me saw me hit my brake, so they kind of checked up. And I happened to be in a little pocket of about probably 15 cars with no damage and probably two or three seconds after we came to a stop, you just heard boom, 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 collision after collision behind us. Um, you know, uh, I think I heard a reporter say there's probably 25 or so cars involved. I would say it's probably north of 75 to 150. It's just, as far as you can see, it's just crumpled. Lance, I mean, how scary was it to see something like this happen? I mean, I, I'm assuming what, you were en route to work or, or school when, when this went down? Yeah, I was taking my daughter to the airport, uh, and we had to go a long way around because uh, we're residents of Mandeville, and the Causeway Bridge was closed, so we had to go around through I-55. And, you know, coming to a stop, I was happy I came to a stop, but I was more concerned when I looked at my rearview mirror, and luckily we saw everybody stop, and I knew after about, you know, 10 seconds after hearing the collisions that they didn't come in, into us, I knew we were okay. And to be honest with you, it's almost a godsend. My daughter, who I was taking to the airport, is an ICU nurse. So she hopped out and she was helping people for about two hours. And, uh, you know, we're right place, right time, so she could help some people. Unfortunately, there's going to be some people that, as you, as you reported, are not going to walk away from this. Yeah, Lance, so after you stopped, I mean, you, you took some of the pictures that we're showing right now on Fox Weather. Walk me through exactly, I mean, what you saw. Because, I mean, it almost looks as if, I mean, a bomb went off. I mean, I think that's really the best way to explain it. It, yeah, that's that's what it sounded like. It just sounded like, you know, boom, 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 boom from behind us. After about 30 seconds, once I realized that no matter the impact behind us, it wasn't going to get to us, then we got out of the vehicle. I walked a couple of vehicles in front. There's a four, a, it looks like a Dodge truck on top of a wildlife and fishery F-150 where it went up underneath it. Uh, I have had reports. I've Chair said that at least two cars went over the uh sighting into the water mm. um it looks like you know i've never been in a war zone but i would imagine this is probably what it looks like their cars were on fire you could hear the tires popping and you know it was it was it was unlike anything i've ever seen before just very lucky that we were where we were and and i'm just curious said it. yeah were other people i mean once you stopped did other people i guess try to get out of their vehicle and, and were they trying to help everyone else or were they just waiting uh, for police to arrive or was everybody else like you just in shock? No, I mean, after about 30 seconds, once I think people realized that they were no longer in an impact zone, then they started getting out, checking on people in front where the where some accidents were. And, and, you know, again, we've seen a couple of nurses out here, my daughter being one of them, were checking people mostly for concussions. I saw a broke, look like a broke collarbone some shoulders, a car about three, probably 30 yards behind us was right at the very, very front of the second impact zone. And, uh, you know, they were able to get a tow strap off a pickup and rip the door open and get the guy out. Um, I don't know his status. He was banged up pretty bad. Um, it was, it was, it was surreal, but most of the people who were safe got out and tried to help people because they knew that this was, this was a bad situation. Ever see anything like this? No, I have not. I have not. I've just, just, just video footage. Yeah. 
Uh, obviously, you know, we're, we're going to be prayerful about, you know, some of the people who uh, didn't make it here. But um, right now, I know that you were still there. So can you tell us what's happening right now? I mean, are, are more first responders now coming in? Are they trying to uh, get the folks who are on uh, the roadway off of the roadway? What's happening now? Well, this, I don't know if you're familiar with this uh, stretch road route. It's an elevated uh, uh, freeway. And so they shut down. We're, we're headed southbound. They shut down northbound, and all the paramedics started coming down southbound on the northbound lane and just kind of basically set up a, uh, a little triage as they pulled over. We probably have half of uh, South Louisiana, the finest out here helping out. And they were taking some people on gurneys over the railing to ambulances and getting them out of here. And the people that weren't, you know, uh, critical, they were, you know, the they are starting to put out fire. The fire trucks are here. There were several vehicles on fire. And so their main thing is they wanted to keep the fire from engulfing the whole the whole pile up. Right. And then, of course, uh, impacting the roadway, you know, which, you know, that would that would be an issue uh, as well here. Um, you know, tell me about like what it smells like as well. I mean, does it still smell like vehicles are on fire? Do you still see other vehicles on fire? It smells like a lot of burnt rubber right now. Uh, they've been dousing the vehicles in front of us, uh, the fire trucks have. And we also have this almost like a smell of a sweet crude because we have the swamp fire. And that's what they said intensified this fog is there is a, a swamp fire on the, uh, coming out of eastern New Orleans. And I guess the wind shifted and it just created a uh, uh, this mess. I've never seen it so thick here in my life. Yeah, right now we're, we were just looking at a live traffic traffic camera, and it looks like uh, some emergency vehicles are instructing people, I guess, to try and, and uh, drive away here. Um, you know, obviously, um, you know, I know that you had mentioned that there were a, a number of people who were impacted. You anticipate the number of injuries, you know, being significantly higher than uh, what we are now reporting. Um, you know, have you gotten any word on when they might even possibly open up? Uh, fully open up or at least partially reopen up this highway or do you anticipate it's likely going to be at least several hours if not tomorrow no i would imagine i don't think i think tomorrow would be uh, long in the tooth but i think we're going to be here another you know four to five hours i just don't know how the way that this interstate set up being elevated over water with no crossovers how you get the uh the wreckers in here to start you know pulling these vehicles off to the side of the road to create a uh, a pathway for the vehicles that are uh running to move yeah. forward and Lance, uh, my last question to you, how is visibility now? I mean, has it has it started to improve or is it still really bad? No, as of about an hour ago, it started to lift. I mean, it's still very foggy, cloudy. I mean, I don't see any news helicopters in the air, if that tells you how mm. thick it is, but it's not on the ground like it was or on the water like it was earlier. Gotcha. All right. Well, Lance Scott, thank you so much for uh, spending part of your afternoon with us. You know, good luck to you and uh, thank goodness that you are safe, of course. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.